Today, we are going to be building an automation to execute compliance and remediation of vulnerable features on Cisco IOS 60 devices. We're primarily going to be focusing on features such as HTTPS and HTTP, which are some of the recent features that have been deemed vulnerable across this operating system. For the demo architecture, we will be using Identical Automation Platform to create the configuration compliance activities, as well as an automation that can be used to execute the configuration compliance job, scan the network, and also perform remediation activities. The automation gateway will be, will be responsible for talking to the Cisco IOS XC devices. And lastly, we're gonna be creating an automation trigger in Operations Manager to set a schedule to run these activities on a daily basis. First step on the automation will be to create a device group with Cisco IOS XC devices from the inventory. Second, we're going to create a golden configuration policy to detect HTTP and HTTPS configurations and disallow them. Third, we're going to build a workflow that will be responsible for scanning the devices, executing the golden config policy, also generating an HTML report that will be visualized within the automation platform and also sent us an email, and also perform remediation activities. Lastly, we're going to schedule an automation to be executed from Operations Manager, as well as being scheduled on a daily basis. First step, we're going to go into Automation Platforms Configuration Manager, and I will zoom in. We're going to create a device group. I'm going to call my device group iOS XE Routers. For the purpose of this automation, I will just add one device into this group. Next, we're going to create a golden configuration policy. I will call this configuration policy the golden, golden configuration policy HTTP scan. And this will be a Cisco IOS device. So you can see here, I have my tree model. I could add additional nodes. For this purposes, I am just going to focus on a global check for HTTP configuration. My first command is going to be IP HTTP server, and my second is going to be IP HTTP secure dash server. This will find the presence of these commands on the devices. But the one thing that I have to set on here is I don't want this config to be present. So I will disallow both of these commands. As you can see, these commands have been flagged to being disallowed in the config rather than being included. I will save my config template. And the second thing that I want to do is add my device group into my config config into my golden config policy. Perfect. So my first step is complete. I have a device group, my two first steps, a device group and a golden configuration tree. Next, we're going to go into Automation Studio and we will create a workflow to execute the actions that we discussed earlier. We will call this workflow also HTTP scan workflow. Now, I will keep both tabs present and we'll explain in a minute. We will need some parameters from Configuration Manager just to make this a very quick automation that we will build. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run compliance for a node from Golden Config. I will connect that task into the canvas and organize it a little bit. Next thing that we will do is we're going to query the report's results out of disk compliance run into my automation. Now, let's open this task first to see what things are required from it. Run compliance for node requires tree ID, version, and node path. Tree ID can be obtained from the URL of the golden config, just right here. So I will copy that into my automation here as such. This can be also found dynamically through another task 
but I will do it statically for now, just for demonstration purposes. For my version, it's going to be an initial version. That can also be found into the config manager tree right here in the versioning tab. Next, I need to populate the node path of my golden configuration tree, which will be base. That can also be found in golden config right here in base. If I added additional child nodes into this, just as such, as such and rename them node one, I would need to populate that respectively in the automation studio task. Okay, that looks good for now. We're gonna run compliance report, that's perfect. Next, I am gonna populate my query task. For my query task, I've already predetermined what query I need to execute here. So I will populate that. Now, for the as such as the object that I'm gonna query will be the result of this run compliance for node task. As such, the task is already connected to the canvas on the automation. So I will refer it to task and it automatically will refer to the previous task that it was connected to. So here it says run compliance for node and the result is gonna be run compliance batch result, which is the result variable. Out of here, I will, re I will query the first report ID. Next, we need to get compliance report detail. This will give us the result of that report and tell us whether the device is has set those features enabled or not, namely the ISP ICTP server commands and the HTTP secure server. The report ID has been already queried here. I will rename my task to query report ID here so that it can be useful within the rest of the context of the automation. In my get compliance report detail task, it requires my report ID variable. I will select task and my query report ID will automatically be available since my task is connected to the rest of the automation. Next, I will, ex I will use the render Jinja template task. This is an optional step. Um, I have a pre-built HTML template that will make my report pretty in HTML with colors and will show me several details of the, of, of the compliance report. And I will use that for today. Render Jinja template task requires two variables. One of them is the name of the report of the template. I already have that statically set. It's called GC report HTML. Second is the context. The context will be the output of my GC compliance report out of this task. I will select task as such, and it's already pre-selected, get compliance report, compliance report detail. Next, I will query the template output of that task. Render template, it's the variable that I want out of this task that's already predetermined. And the task that I want to query will be render Jinja template. Okay. I'll be query, I will rename this. Next, I will insert a manual task where the user will have the opportunity to look at the report and determine what action they want to follow next. I will give this a header, HTTP compliance results. A message. And the body will be the output of my rendered template task after I query it. My button success will say continue and I will not populate a button failure button. I don't need that for now. Next thing I wanna do is I also wanna send an email report and that will be very useful 
when I schedule this to run on a day on a nightly basis. I don't want to sit down and wait for the automation to execute and send and and visualize the data on a manual task. I actually want to visualize that HTML on an email. And that's the one piece that I will use right now. When I say mail with options, I populate the from field. The to field will be an array. I will set it to be a static array. And the subject is going to be HTTP compliance HTTP scan results. And the body will be the render template as well. The rest of the fields are not required, so I will not populate those. I also want to have the option of executing remediation activities. And as such, I will also provide the option for the, execute, the automation execution or the operator to choose to execute remediation tasks. I will provide a manual task that will say, will give the option to remediate. And this will be an automatic remediation based on the commands populated on the golden config tree. That is really important. For this use case, we can actually perform automatic remediation. We will say immediate or end job. Since end job is the option that I want to bypass remediation, I will change that to a failure as that's what, we will, what the button failure will produce. For my auto remediate task, I will use my advanced auto remediation task. My compliance report ID is already queried up top here. That's one of the requirements for this task. I will look for that on my drop down list, query report ID. Remove disallowed config will be set to true since we dis disallowed the HTTP commands and the HTTP secure server commands and the options we will leave empty. Now, as soon as this is done, I will like to also retry the entire report again, just to make sure that my remediation happened successfully. That can be as easily done as connecting my last task to my first task on the automation. The hope is that once the automation runs in its entirety, I will have the actual, the, actually the opportunity to select auto remediation, scan the network again. Once that is done, I will be able to end the automation. We can save the automation and let's create a trigger for this automation so that we can test it. I will go to my operations manager for that. And here I will create an automation entry on my list for my list. Going to call it HPA, HTTP scan automation. And I will not set a description for now. I will point it to a workflow scan, HTTP scan workflow, which is the workflow that we just created. And I will save that for now. Let's create a trigger first. I want my trigger to be manual first because we want to test the automation manually. This is going to be my trigger. It's manual. And we're not going to attach a form since this automation will leverage the data on the golden config tree and in the config manager application for all its execution. Now that we have a trigger, a manual trigger, we can actually test our automation. Let's click on run and let's click on run manually. Now let's wait for the automation to finish all these pieces. We have run compliance for the node. We queried the report ID. We got the details, rendered the template, and now we have the opportunity to see what our device exceptions look like. As you can see, this is a manual task that lets me see the results of my config compliance job. I can see my device name here, iOS, CSR, AWS 1. I see that I have two warnings and my device is currently enabled for IP HTTP server and IP HTTP secure server.
I would like to continue. Currently my task is sending an email. And now I actually have the option to perform remediation as we configure the automation. Do you, want, do you wish to perform automatic remediation? Yes, we will say yes, we'll remediate. After remediation, my automation will retry the entire process again, checking for compliance, and will let me know the results. Now, my device has zero exceptions. And another email for the results. And I have the opportunity to now end the automation after remediation is done. We could also have the option of performing or disabling all these manual tasks and replacing them by automated decisions based on the preference of this, since this would be ultimately scheduled to run on a daily basis. Now, to finalize the demo, we will go back into our operations manager window and select our automation, and we will create another trigger for this. And this will be a daily schedule trigger. I would like for this automation to run every night at midnight. We'll configure it to run as such. At midnight, every night, and we'll say repeat. We want to see this happen on every one day. And process miss none, I will set that to none and I will save the changes. Now I have created a trigger that will cause this automation to run every single night and send me an email report. This is the conclusion of the demo. Thank you for tuning in.